everyone. This is David Spooner again with MindBend Studios and Angular Digital. Um, I wanted to follow up on the previous tutorial that I did. Uh, I have been doing a lot of research into uh, trying to figure out a better way to do the Tron light cycle light, light streaks, and um, they came up with a really good, really good combination of a, of a couple of different ideas. Um, so what, what what we're going to do is we're going to we're going to attempt to take a light cycle animation path and have two points created at the point of the light cycle and then create geometry for that from that so that we can then wrap a a, 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 t a texture around it to give it the light path um, so let's just go ahead and get started into it um, so we have our scene here and I have my light cycle the old one um, and there, it is animated I just gave it a real simple, quick animation just so that we can kind of see the it, it applied to, to a new animation. So we're just going to take this and we're going to apply this new technique to the animation, and we'll show you. I'll show you how powerful it is. So first thing we're going to do is we're going to we're going to create the two points in which these these uh, these particles are going to emanate from, so that we can create. The, the geometry for, for the for the light trail. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to create two cubes, and I'm going to attach them to the rear of the bike, right where I want the um, right where I want the the light cycle trails to come out of. All right, so here's the cube. I'm probably going to make it. Uh, five pixels all the way around, or five centimeters all the way around. And we're going to take it and we're going to move it right to the center portion of the rear of the light cycle. Just going to put it right, right there. That's where the ribbon's coming out of, right there. Okay. Let's come over here to the left portion here. I'm going to take it, and move it up. I'm actually going to put it inside. The geometry of the wheel. I'll put it right there. Okay. And I'm going to copy. I'm going to duplicate it. And I'll put. I'm going to. I'm going to name these. Trail, bottom. Trail, top. Just so that I know what they are. I'll move the top part of it to the upper portion of the geometry, and still keep it with inside the wheel. So now I have both the points in which to in which to create the the the, begin, the the bottom and the top part of the the trail. So I'm actually going to move these right into the light cycle uh, null object that has everything that has to do with the light cycle. And as soon as I do that, those points, those two those two cubes that I made are going to follow the the light cycle. So that's that's all we have to do for creating the the two points to, to emanate from. So what we're going to do now is we're going to create the the actual light ribbon um, spline path, or the uh, the uh, the actual uh, spline that we're going to we're going to generate. So we're just going to create a simple rectangle. Move that here so we can kind of see. And for the size, I'm going to do three pixels for the width. And for the height, bring it down to and we're gonna try to make it the size in between the, the, the top and the bottom markers. Alright, so that's good. So 75. Okay, so now since we're gonna be using sweep derbs, I am going to reverse these parameters. So I'm going to make this 75 in width and the height is going to be 3. And I'm going to explain why um, why, why we need to do that uh, in just a minute. So we have what we're going to to wrap around uh, a sweep nerve. So let's go ahead and create our sweep nerve. It's under hyper nerves, under sweep nerves. I'm going to create that and we're going to put the, the rectangle in there. Now what we're going to do is we're going to create two tracer objects and under this is under MoGraph 
tracer. We're going to create two of these. One to trace out the bottom animation of, the, of this cube and the top animation of this cube. And we're going to call these bottom trace and top trace. So let's go ahead and move these into the sleep nerves. Now, the order for the sleep nerves is very important. The object that you're going to be sleeping over the, the spline path is always first. And the bottom part of the sleep of, of the sleep nerve is always second. And the top part, the, the third piece is always the rail. And now the, the third piece is, is not always required. Um, you only need the, the, the third piece or the rail um, if you're going to be doing um, banking or, or turns or you know modifying the, the, the rotation of the of the actual element that you're that you're extruding over the, the sleep nerve. Um, so what we're gonna do is we're gonna look in the into the trace properties here. And we see that for some reason the rectangle are in there, so we're just gonna get, get rid of that. And we're gonna go into the blue light cycle and we're gonna move the bot the trail bottom cube into the trace link for the bottom trace. So the bottom trace has the trail bottom cube in there. Do the same thing for the top trace we're going to move we're going to get rid of that in there and move the trail top into the trace link for the top trace okay so what we have here is a rectangle which is on its side and the reason why it's on its side is because sleep nerves especially when you're using a third piece for the rail the the rail magnetizes the item that you're sweeping over the the spline so imagine that it's laying on its side and it's it's being extruded over this, the sleep nerve of the bottom trace or the bottom the, the first spline the top spline is what's going to magnetize and lift up the portion that you're extruding so in essence this top trace right here is going to lift the rectangle straight up and down or wherever the t the top portion of the top trace is so with that active, when we come out here to perspective, let's take a look at our light cycle right here. And as you can see, we already have our light cycle trail. And this is dynamic. It'll follow the animation all the way. And as you can see, it banks with the light cycle. See that? Now the animation that I have is really crude, so obviously there will be seen some things that aren't that won't look as pretty, and I'm re also recording at 1080p, uh, 24 frames a second. So obviously my my project's jumping around a lot. Um, but as you can see, on a much better animation using smoother framing, that was five. That was five minutes. So this is a this is very powerful. And let's say let's say we want to add. I mean, but I mean, as of course it is right now. It's actually global illumination's on. So turn that off. It's just a solid a solid rail right now. But you know, very easily we can go. We can take this. And add a simple gradient uh, ramp to it. So let's say we want to make it a, a blue light cycle. So get a nice light blue color. Uh, do the same thing for the luminance. And for transparency, we're going to load up a gradient. <clears throat> and uh, because we're we're wrapping this over UVW. It will wrap all the way around, so it goes from the left side all the way down to the bottom, and on the right side all the way up to the top. So 
the bottom of the the light trail is actually in the middle of this gradient. So we're going to create some points here. And we're going to change up. This is obviously black. And this is not going to be totally white, but a very light gray. And this is also going to be a light gray. This will be black. This will be also light gray. And that's also black. Okay, so we apply this material to the sleep nerve. And it's already looking really good. Just gotta play with the, uh, the transparency a little bit. But as you can see, this, this was a really quick trail. And if I change the animation on this, here. Let's change the animation on, on this light cycle. We already see this going off that way, but let's say I want to get rid of this keyframe. I want to make it turn off to the right again. Come down here. I'm just going to do this really fast. I'm, <laughs> I'm not going to try to make this really good, but I just want to show you the power of this, this technique. This way, bank a little bit. Make the keyframe. this a little bit. And we instantly see the light ribbon is updated with our animation. So what, use, using this technique, a very simple technique, you get very quick, decent looking results. Um, and I say decent because you're missing a few things. Um, most importantly, you're missing the the light cycle bump. You know, like um, in in the in the movie, the light cycle, the actual ribbon actually comes out and then up like a little hump, and then it goes on. So I've tried to try and, trying to discover the, how to do that with the material, but I have yet to figure out how to do that. Um, so this is pretty much a square uh, light cycle ribbon, but it's it's still pretty good for for how quick it was to implement this. And I, I hope I hope that, uh, that there'll be people out there who, who are especially looking to do this in, in Cinema 4D. Um, using Cinema 4D and, and the method it did before was, was extremely time consuming. And using this would have cut off probably about four days worth of animation and, and a lot of keyframing and, and stuff like that. So, um, I hope that this will uh, that this will help out people trying to create a similar effect. And um, if you have any questions on trying to implement this, um, please leave, leave a comment. Um, there is a little bit of of issues when you try to put in the rectangle when you create the width and the height and you and drop it in there and, you, and then you create your tracers. If for some reason you're getting weird results that don't seem to wind up with with um, the height of of your two uh, tr tracer objects. Um, try just re recreating the rectangle, or the the object that you're sweeping over. Um, sometimes, if you if you rotate it too much or you um, you do too much to it, it won't extrude over the sleep nerve properly. So just remember your width and your height, and then just delete it, and then recreate the uh, the uh, rectangle spline. Make sure you give it the same properties. Chop it back into the sleep nerves, make sure it's first, and you're back in business. So, um, I'm David Spooner with Mindbend Studios and Angular Digital, and um, I will talk to everyone later.